Hello. Yes, as you can see, I'm not in my normal setup. I'm actually recording this on my phone. So I'm currently in Ireland visiting my parents for Mother's Day and I just did not have time to record during the week, so we're doing it now. We all know and love Pokemon as a franchise that doesn't really like to be too dark with their content. For the most part, Pokemon is quite light-hearted as its target audience is of a younger age. However, there are a couple of instances in these games throughout the years that hint at things much more sinister than what we may want to believe. In this video, we will be discussing the dark side to Game Freak's games. If you like the sound of that, be sure to hit the like button down below and why not subscribe whilst you're at it. It helps out a bunch. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. The Great Pokemon War We humans live alongside Pokemon at times as friendly playmates and at times as cooperative workmates. This quote has been used in every generation of Pokemon since Red and Blue in some form or way. Whatever way it's phrased, it still gives the same meaning to the player. Humans and Pokemon coexist to the point where they're both dependent on each other. So dependent that humans once used Pokemon as weapons to fight in their wars. In Pokemon X and Y, we meet a man named AZ. Man, if you watch like my past three videos, you might think that I'm obsessed with AZ. It's because I am. AZ tells us the meaning behind his actions in using a lethal weapon known as the ultimate weapon to end a war. The war he is referencing is actually well talked about among Pokemon theorists. Many believe that Lieutenant Surge is the first to reference such a war. However, we know that Lieutenant Surge isn't in the same war that AZ is referencing, as we know that the Great Pokemon War that AZ was referencing happened over 2,000 years prior to the events of X and Y. I don't know about you guys, but Lieutenant Surge definitely doesn't look a day over 2,000 years old. If he is, I need to know this man's skin routine. Although we know that Lieutenant Surge wasn't referencing the same war as AZ, this just leads to further questions. How many wars have there been in the Pokemon world, and what were they for? I'll be diving into that at some point in the future, but here are some other videos that might explain it a bit better than I could. Regardless of how many wars there have been in the Pokemon world, it's still quite dark that they're actually included in any form of lore. Knowing that many Pokemon and humans lost their lives at war is actually quite sinister and creates a sense of sorrow when you really think about it. Where there's war, there's death. Rest in peace, you beautiful Pokemon NPCs. Ghost type Pokemon. I know, on a list of the darkest things about Pokemon, I'm actually going to talk about ghost types, not dark types. Stick with me. I think the ghost type might just be the most interesting type in the franchise. Some Pokedex entries for certain Pokemon confirm that ghost types are the spirits of dead things. Not only does that make this typing one of the creepiest factors in the games, it also makes it the darkest. We know from multiple Pokedex entries for Gengar that it likes to kill things for fun. Hello? Gengar is a literal psychopath. But he's so cute, look at his little face, look at the way he bounces. <coughs> No, it's a serial killer. It's not only Gengar though. Look at this thing. One of its Pokedex entries reads, its actual appearance is unknown. A scholar who saw what was under its rag was overwhelmed by terror and died from the shock. A gust of wind revealed what hides under this Pokemon's rag to a passing trainer who went home and died painfully that very night. Wow, well, I wanna know what the hell's under that rag. Well, it doesn't even stop there. For Mimikyu because this next Pokedex entry makes it even darker. A lonely Pokemon, it conceals its terrifying appearance beneath an old rag so it can get closer to people and other Pokemon. Personally, I think that's sadder than the Cubone backstory. The fact it has to conceal itself to try and get closer to others and to protect them from itself. Wow, Game Freak, that is messed up. Poor Mimikyu, man. Drifloon is another ghost type Pokemon that just needs to stop. <laughs> Said to lure away young children and carry them off to the afterlife, some whisper that Drifloon are formed of reincarnated human souls, but these rumours are as yet unconfirmed. I actually can't believe that they kept this thing's backstory and lore as a child stealer. Seriously though, although ghost types have some really screwed up backstories, they are still fan favourites. They're just so cool, but Gengar, please try and get over your addiction of killing people. Thank you, mate. 
Evil teams. Pokemon's evil teams in recent years have become somewhat of a gimmick in themselves. Team Skull, Team Yell, Team Star all come to mind when thinking of evil teams in Pokemon games that aren't very threatening. However, nearly every single team prior to Generation 7 had very different ambitions to that of Team Skull, Team Yell, and Team Star. Team Rocket, for instance, is Pokemon's version of a Mafia, literally. Giovanni is the leader of this organization, having his grunts commit crimes such as stealing trainers' Pokemon, hijacking buildings with civilians in them, all while Giovanni sits back and enjoys the view. He's an extremely bad person whose team are just as bad as he is, really. Then we have Team Aqua and Team Magma, Archie and Maxi being their leaders. Simply put, they want to expand either the sea or the land to such an extent that they wish to get rid of one of the two. Team Aqua literally wants to have a world of water, whereas Team Magma wants to create a world with just land. Both are delusional. Honestly, when you look back on these two teams' objectives, they were really trying to end mankind. Their plans make sense, but the reason behind their plans is just nonsensical. One team that just screams to me when talking about this subject is Team Plasma, one of, if not the best evil team out of all of them. Team Plasma's original goal was to liberate all Pokemon from their trainers by either manipulating the trainer to release their Pokemon or by theft. Gets this, Team Plasma's true leader exploited the group in an attempt to rule Unova as the only one with Pokemon. Now, this plan does seem extremely difficult to pull off, considering the amount of trainers that would most likely rather die than give up their Pokemon. Although the message that Team Plasma were trying to get across seemed like a very good reason to give up your Pokemon, most people in Unova saw past their facade and put up a fight. The whole of Team Plasma's story is extremely dark and one that I really adore. Well done Game Freak for writing such a masterpiece. We also have Team Galactic who also just want to end the world and restart everything. Yeah, pretty self-explanatory why that's on this list. And I'll touch on Team Flare's antics a little bit here. What the f***, Lysander? What is your problem? Can we just like stop with all the genocide, please? So, I hope you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like if you did, and why not subscribe whilst you're at it. Be sure to check out the Discord, the link is down uh, in the description below. We have a great community over there, be sure to come and hang out. But with that guys, I will see you in the next video.